Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danielle and I'm the owner of Dan Fancy Creations and the Drunk Flamingo Glitter. Today we are going to be working on a doubled right angled vinyl wrap as well as drips created with hot glue. If y'all are in my Drunk Flamingo Glitter group, you probably caught the live I did on this tutorial, but I also like turning my lives into regular YouTube tutorials. That way it is sped up a little bit. A lot of the extra stuff is kind of cut out. That way the tutorial kind of flows more smoothly from beginning to end. So in case you guys need to go back and rewatch something, you're not rewatching an entire live. And this is a more condensed version that you can easily go back for reference. If you aren't in my Drunk Flamingo Glitter group, I do suggest joining. We do lots of lives in that group as well as offer tips and tricks for all of the products that I offer over at the Drunk Flamingo. Everything you see will be covered in today's live, but if you guys have questions or comments, please feel free to ask below or in my Drunk Flamingo Glitter group and I will come back and answer them. Don't forget to check out the description where I list all items you will need to recreate this tumbler, as well as discount codes from my favorite suppliers. But for now, we're going to go ahead and get started on this tutorial, and I hope you guys enjoy. y'all so here are the items we're going to be using today these are newly released patterns on the drunkflamingo.com these are my halloween treats and then i have two cute little bat patterns one is an opal bat and one is a sparkle bat so we're going to start by trimming off all of the white edges I love these patterns and these little elements. I put these together um, last year in my Damn Fancy Tribe, which is my mentorship group. We did a 3D spider tumbler that was inspired by a spider cake that I saw on Pinterest. And I just happened to find the little elements that were a spider cake with the 3D spiders. So this pattern was just meant to be. I am loving all of the pastel Halloween colors this year. I think they're so fun. So now I'm going to show you guys how we're going to create the right angle for our wrap. So we are going to start with one pattern. I'm going to use the Halloween treat pattern first. And we're going to flip the vinyl over on the back and we're going to make two dots. We are going to lay our tumbler down so your template is going to be different depending on if you're using a 20 ounce, a 30 ounce, a 24 plump. So we're going to take our tumbler and we're going to lay it on the vinyl and we're going to put a dot at the height of our tumbler. So the first dot is the height of the cup. The next dot is going to be the circumference of the cup. So we're just going to wrap the tumbler with the vinyl and we're going to put a dot where the edges meet. So there's two dots. One is the height and one is the circumference. So we're going to draw a line connecting these two dots. So now we have our right triangle. So we are going to take our scissors and we are going to trim this. We're gonna cut that triangle out. Sorry, it's a little blurry. I guess it got out of focus for a second. So now we have almost a full sheet of vinyl that we can still use for other projects. So next we're going to take this right triangle. I know I'm going to wrap this first one going like this around the cup. So now we need to cut out our second triangle that's going to be wrapped on the top half of the tumbler. So instead of wrapping it again, since we already have this triangle cut out, we know that the next triangle is going to be the same size. 
So I'm just going to lay this triangle down on the back of the vinyl sheet and we're going to trace it. Now when you are doing this, make sure that you have your pattern facing the correct way. You don't wanna cut out the triangle and then your pattern be upside down. So I just put two little dots again, drew my straight line, and then we're going to cut this out. And again, we have almost a full sheet. We're going to save that for later for another cup. So now we have our two triangles. And when you put it together, you basically have the size of a 20 ounce tumbler wrap. So now we're going to apply these triangles to our tumbler. I'm going to get my cup cradle from Cami Page Boutique. I love this cup cradle. And this is how I get my straight lines on my cup. I just put a Sharpie right up against the straight edge of the cup cradle and draw my straight line. And then I move the cup cradle down, match up my Sharpie with the line that's already on the cup and finish that line down the cup. So now we have a straight line on our tumbler. If you guys do not have any tools from Brooke, who owns Cami Page Boutique, we do have a discount code down below. I love all of her tools. The cup cradle and the edging tool are probably the tools that I use most from her. So next we are going to peel the backing off of one of our triangles, cut a little bit of that backing off so we can use this like a hinge. We're going to apply that vinyl right along the straight line that we drew. And we're just going to wrap this around the cup to make sure that the little point of the triangle matches up with the vinyl on the other side. And once we know that it is straight, we're going to get our squeegee and we're just going to smooth that vinyl down as we remove the backing. And when I get to the edge, I like to do this with my fingers just to make sure that everything is lined up exactly how I want it to be lined up. Then we're just smoothing everything down, making sure all of the edges are attached and down on the tumbler. And then we're going to apply our second right angle. So we don't need a line on here since this is already a straight edge but I am going to do the same thing. Cut off a little bit of that backing, use it as a hinge, just to make sure that everything is lined up how we want it. Can y'all hear that bug? I think it's a cicada. It's very loud. This is why I like the hinge method because you can adjust your vinyl until you get it as straight as you want it versus just hoping that it's straight and having to peel the vinyl off at wrinkling, wasting sheets. Whoever came up with this method was a genius. So we are just going to smooth down that second right triangle now that we know it is straight. And once I have both of my vinyl sheets on my tumbler, I'm going to take my heat gun. I'm just heating the edges and the um, top and bottom rims just to get that vinyl to adhere better to the tumbler and form a stronger bond.
and I am just pressing down after I use my heat gun just to get the vinyl to stick better to the metal. And typically I would use my Cami Page Boutique edging tool, but I already have good stainless rims on this tumbler, so I did not need to use that tool for this particular cup. So now that we have the vinyl on, we are going to break out the colored glue sticks. I got these on Amazon. They will be linked below. I have colored and glitter. I also have them in full size sticks because I have my heavy duty glue gun is a full size stick glue gun. And I have a couple smaller glue guns that are for the mini sticks. So during the live, these are the colors that the viewers chose. We went with a hot pink and a light pink. So I'm just putting the rest of these back in the package. Now I will say if you're going to use different colors in your glue gun, you will have a little bit of residue left over from your last glue stick. So I suggest either having random clear glue sticks on hand that you can kind of afford to waste um, if you need to feed that clear through the glue gun just to clean out the other color that's in there. Or if you don't mind your colors kind of mixing together, then you don't need to worry about that. I know that in my last glue gun, I did use a black glue stick so I knew that my colors were going to be a little bit mixed with black, which I really didn't mind. So I am going to apply striping tape right along the seam where the triangles meet. And this is so I can get a good clean edge. I'm just going to apply the hot glue right on this striping tape just like I would do if I were doing epoxy drips. The only difference is that I'm going to peel this tape off while that hot glue is still warm. If you try to pull it when the hot glue has cooled down, you're not going to be able to get a clean, smooth line because it will be stiff. And I have these little sprinkles. I got them from CCDIY years ago. I'm not sure if they still offer them. But I'm just going to use the bats that are in this mixture. So this is my cordless glue gun. I have a smaller one. I also have a larger one that has full size glue sticks that actually has a battery pack. I do like the larger one better. I get better drips with it. Um, it heats up more and the battery lasts longer, but I did not have any full size colored glue sticks. So I had to use my smaller one, which this one still works fine. But I do like to let the glue kind of sit in that glue gun and warm up as hot as it can get. That way we get a good drip. The warmer that hot glue is, the further down your cup it will drip. So we're just waiting. And I got out my little crystal cubiton. This is from the Crystal Ninja. I was looking for my regular wax pencils, which would work as well. I like to use these to attach my little sprinkles to my drips. They're just easier and less messy than tweezers or things like that. So I'm just cleaning out my glue gun a little bit. I just do a couple squirts in a medicine cup just to get the first color that was in there out of the glue gun. So 
So now that I have my glue gun relatively cleaned out, I am just going to start squirting this hot glue right along the edge of that striping tape. So here I am explaining what I'm going to do on the live. And here we go. So we're just doing a couple pumps along the striping tape. And then I am just kind of peeling it back while it's still warm. And then we're just going to do this all the way down the tumbler. I'm just kind of pumping out drips in about two and a half, three inches at a time. And I know doing drips with glue sticks is nothing new. I do have a girl that is in my tutorial group named Kelly Hendricks. I cannot remember her business name, but she was the first one that I saw who did drips with black hot glue. She does a lot of the oil containers and she has always used black glue sticks to do the drips on those cups. And I always thought that was so cool So I decided to try them out for this cup. And I will say I do like these a lot better than puffy paint. I did puffy paint drips once. I was not a fan of those. I do like doing drips with fast set. That's probably my favorite method. But if you need something that's quick and easy, hot glue is definitely the way to go. So now I'm going to do the second set of drips. So I'm going to peel off another strip of striping tape. I have also made sure that the hot glue has cooled down from the first drips I did. You don't want to attach the striping tape if the first set of hot glue drips is still warm, which it does not take long to cool down at all. And I'm applying this striping tape so there is a tiny gap in between the hot glue drips. That way I can go back and apply some pinstripes just in between the drips. So I took out the part of the pink glue stick we did not use. You can see it sitting on my table and inserted the hot glue drips. And we are just doing the same thing. We flipped our tumbler upside down and we are just squirting a few pumps of hot glue. And I was trying to get these to drip a little bit more with my heat gun because I did not let that glue stick sit in my glue gun for as long as I should have so it wasn't super drippy. And just like epoxy, if you do two to three squirts in one section, then that drip is going to drip down further than if you just did one. It's kind of the equivalent of taking a small little ball of epoxy and applying it on the rim. That ball is going to drip down the tumbler. So 
So we are just going to continue this down the cup. And when I get to the edges, I just kind of cover that area with the glue. I don't really necessarily want drips right here because I don't want it dripping off of the cup. So I'm just removing that other hot pink glue stick that I did not use. That way we're not wasting it. I'm just put it right there so we did not use that one or we just use a tiny little piece of it and then we're peeling off our tape I'm turning off my hot glue gun so I was pretty happy with how these turned out I thought they were definitely fun I always like to do fun things with the drips if you guys have watched my tutorial in the past last fall and Halloween I did some fun drips on random places of tumblers now I'm just using my mini torch and we're just torching those glue drips just to get rid of any little stringies smooth out sections that I may have touched you, you don't want to be too heavy-handed with this little torch and burn our vinyl or our glue we're just kind of dusting it back and forth So I decided to use little glue drips. I thought that I could heat the hot glue and kind of add those sprinkles onto the warm hot glue, but it didn't work out quite as well as I wanted to. I didn't feel like they were attached as well. So I'm just going in with some glue. I don't even know what's in this bottle. I think it's Super Tac Fusion. I typically use liquid fusion, but I just had this bottle handy. Any adhesive will work. We just need them to be attached until we can get epoxy on. And I just did a couple little bats. I did some ghost and bats in the live, but I wasn't too crazy about it. And the members that were on the live also said that they just preferred the bats. So that is what we did. So I was already loving how this tumbler was turning out. So now we're going to get our decal on our tumbler, but since the decal is very similar to the vinyl that we're using, I am going to go get some foil. So I'm using this silver holographic foil to kind of be the backing for this decal and set it apart from the vinyl. Typically I use bleach spots. I do offer two different styles of bleach spots on the drunkflamingo.com, but I wanted something a little bit different and a little bit sparkly since we were not using glitter on this cup. So I'm just trimming off a little rectangle of this foil and I'm going to trim it down even more just so we have enough foil being used that is going to kind of give a little pop behind this decal. And this was either from Artistic Painting Studio or Southern Bell Glitter. I think this particular pattern came from Artistic Painting Studio. And next we are going to get our foil adhesive. My favorite one to use is the Artistic Painting Studio adhesive. I have used Tacket in the past, but I do prefer this one with Tacket, I typically have to do two coats to get good coverage, which is totally fine. But with the Artistic Painting Studio, I typically only have to do one. So it saves a little bit of time and product. And I'm just going to get a little bit on my brush, kind of hold that rectangle up there. And I'm just kind of dabbing this on 
because I don't necessarily want a super straight line. I want it to be more distressed so it doesn't look like just a random rectangle was stuck on the cup. So I'm just kind of dabbing around the edges with this brush. It is kind of a stiff brush because I'm not good at washing out glues or paints from my paint brushes. So after we have this on our cup, we're going to let it dry. And if you have not worked with this type of adhesive, even after it is dry, it stays tacky. So we're just going to dry this with our heat gun. And if this were on a colored tumbler, yes, the vinyl is colored, but if this were a darker color, this adhesive would be white. And when the adhesive turns clear, then you know it is dry and ready to apply your foil or glitter or whatever it is you're going to be applying. And when I dry this with my heat gun, I'm not using a high heat setting. We're just using a warm setting. So I decided to go ahead and apply my pinstripes while this adhesive was drying. And I just found some sizes that would fit in the little space that was between the glue drips. So I'm going to use a metallic gold and then this hot pink on top. All of my vinyl that is not patterned, I get from Perfect Press HTV, which was formerly JSI Signs. It is local to me in Norcross, Georgia. I have gotten all of my vinyl there for probably the past almost 10 years. I actually used them when I did HTV shirts and their adhesive vinyl selection has just grown so much over the years as well. And their prices are unbeatable. So if you're local, go check them out. They also ship and their shipping is very reasonable. So I'm just carefully applying this gold pinstripe in between the glue drips. And I'm going in with this tool. We're just going to smooth it down. I'm not applying too much force. I don't want to scratch that metallic vinyl. I'm just kind of pressing it down, making sure that it's attached well. And 12 inches of vinyl isn't quite long enough to make it around the cup completely. So I am going back with about an inch and a half, two inches. Here I'm just trimming some of that hot glue off that was kind of in my way. And once we have this gold pinstripe down, we're going to go back with the hot pink. I think this is called fluorescent pink on their website. They do have different fluorescent colors, but pink is my favorite one that they have. And we're just going to go in and apply this right on top of the gold. And just like the gold, the pink was not quite long enough because it was kind of wrapped around the cup. 
So I'm just trimming another two inches or so off of a pinstripe and we're just going to go connect that. Then we're going to trim our ends. I was trying to be very careful because I still had that foil adhesive on my cup. So it was kind of awkward to apply the pinstripes with the adhesive on there, but I made it work. It's all good. So by now the foil adhesive has dried. I'm just going to set this on my cup cradle and we're going to stick this foil sheet onto the tumbler. So we're going to stick this down where the pattern is facing up so that the backing of the pattern attaches to the adhesive. And we're just going to smooth this down And I'm going to use the soft edge of my little squeegee to kind of burnish the foil into the adhesive. And then we're just going to peel that up. But since we don't want that rectangular edge, I'm going to take this little sheet and we're just going to kind of press it along the edges. So that way we get a more distressed look. And there are some parts like right here, I am going to have to go back and add a little bit more of that adhesive. So I was pretty happy with how this was looking. I'm gonna go ahead and put my decal on and then we're going to go add a little bit more of that adhesive just so we can distress some more of those edges. So this is a white backed decal. This is just printed on the same vinyl that my pattern vinyl is printed on. We're just going to smooth that down. And how stinking cute is that? So I'm just going back in with a little bit more of that adhesive, I'm just kind of capping it down with my fingers. Just so we can distress some of these edges. And again, you can dry this with your heat gun, a hair dryer, but do it on low heat. You don't want to cause that vinyl to wrinkle or bubble. And I don't think that I filmed this next part, so I do want to go ahead and tell you guys that I did seal my pinstripes with UV resin. I like to do that to keep them from lifting. So now we're just going back once that adhesive has dried and we're just distressing some of those edges that we were not able to do the first go around.
So you can just distress your edges until you're happy with how it looks. You can always go back and add more of that foil adhesive. And once you're happy with how it looks, I did seal my pinstripes and then we're going to go in with epoxy. I like to use Artistry's 1 to 1 ratio fast set. It's my favorite fast set at the moment. I get a great finish with it, very minimal bubbles, and you can use it for a top coat. I do have a discount code down below if you guys want to try it out. So I applied two coats of epoxy. I took it off of my turner. I buffed it, sanded down any edges or anything that was kind of poking up. And then I put it on for one final coat of epoxy. And after the last layer of epoxy dries, your tumbler will be finished. And you guys can see here that this is how I kind of get my epoxy out of my drips. I just use my fingers and kind of dig out any excess epoxy. That way it will keep epoxy from pulling and micro bubbles kind of forming in those crevices. And don't forget to use your torch to pop all of the bubbles. But that is pretty much it for this tutorial. Here are some finished pictures of the cup. I love how it turned out. I think it's so fun and just unique. I had not seen a doubled right angled tumbler wrap like this before. And of course the drips I have not seen like this before. So I thought it was really fun kind of a cutesy Halloween cup. If you guys decide to try this out or make something similar, make sure you post in my groups. I love to see what you guys come up with and what things inspire you. If you enjoyed this tutorial or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my Damn Fancy Tribe, my Damn Fancy Tutorial Group, or the Drunk Flamingo Glitter Group. They are all linked in the description. Thanks for watching!